All right. Uh oh. Doing that YouTube upload. Give me just a moment to uh, double check and make sure it is finishing. Three minutes left. So it might be a little touch and go tonight. But well, welcome to the Bonnet Chronicles. I am your host, Kalari GXC. Uh, bear with me for just a little bit. I will have a bit of spotty internet for just a little bit because I'm still uploading a mental health vlog. We're going to get started with a heavy topic tonight. I think most of you have heard about this tragedy, but I really wanted to talk about it tonight to kick off a lot of stuff because it's serious. You know, as an American, we are, I don't want to say desensitized to violence like this because we just went through it with Uvalde. We had a shoot in here in Michigan. It is always heartbreaking when gunmen go after kids. So I don't make light of what happened in Nalang a few days ago. The fact that this former policeman, somebody who swore an oath, and I'm not sure if they do that in every country, but here they swear an oath to protect and serve. And in Thailand, they get that fancy royal police title, but this man was troubled. He was fired for possession of methamphetamine, which anybody could tell you that substance messes with you. And in retaliation, he went and he shot up a school on top of murdering his own wife and child. And it's just a sad time. And over 24 children were killed, 36 people altogether, including teachers' aides. And it's just a sad time for a beautiful country. And it just goes to show you how damaged our world is right now. And we all need to start looking out for these signs. Start looking out for people who are constantly looking for ways to escape. Looking for people with violent tendency and access to weapons. We need to protect our kids from this. Enough of this, oh, it can't happen here. It's happening everywhere. When people have access to weaponry, whether we want to act like it's not the gun, it's the person shooting the gun, well, they can't shoot what they don't have access to. And the fact he was able to buy that weapon while he was still a policeman and nobody decided to check when they let him go for heavy drug possession, it was a recipe for disaster. And when I was reading this article, where they detail some of the parents going through talking to their loved ones as the firing was happening on them, hearing their last words, trying to get to the school only to find out that their daughter's dead or their grandchild that they were raising because their son and daughter have to work outside the Providence to make money for the family are dead. It's heartbreaking. And 24 young lives are gone because we don't take gun violence seriously here and abroad, and it's got to stop. And next month, we need to show that we're done with this, that we cannot continue to be held captive by people with too much brains and access to easy bullets. And my heart goes out to the people of Thailand right now. You don't deserve to go down the road that we have gone through. And with everything we've got going on in my country, I know I don't have much of a place to even talk about what you've gone through, but I can commiserate because we have lost so many of our kids to this senseless violence that is so easily solved by our legislators. And that needs to be handled and addressed because it's not going away. And it feels like the infections aren't just viral that's spreading. This, this mental and societal affliction on, I feel powerless, so therefore I'm going to get my power by taking from others. I'm going to get my power by brandishing a weapon. I'm going to get my power by hurting people. It has to stop. This man was barely alive himself. Decided that he was going to throw it all away. I believe he's 52 years old. I could be wrong on his age, but he was definitely not old enough to really fully live his life. He already threw away a career for drugs, and instead of cleaning himself up, he decided to 
destroy lives. And I can't even imagine just reading this last part where this woman lost her twin sons. I'm a mom. I love my kid more than life itself. I really think that the whole reason why I'm still here, the whole reason why I fight to be here is to watch him grow. And one of the things I had to do to ensure that, sadly, was to take him out of the school district he was in and put him in virtual school. I don't feel ashamed of that because between the lockdowns that we had for his school, several times in the South especially, because there was an, a, a, a supposed active shooter, because there was somebody suspicious roaming the grounds with a alleged weapon, that was two times too many for me. I didn't want to be one of those parents who blindly sends your little one to school one day and then gets that dreaded call. And nobody should have to live like that. But that is the kind of captive hell, along with the whole nuclear Armageddon bullshit that we've been dealing with all week, too. And I know some people aren't talking about it. They want to make light about it. They don't want to face the situation. And as you can see, there's some pictures of mourning. I don't understand what Putin's doing. But I do know that there is not enough focus on the fact that that 70-year-old despot who's suffering health issues, whose little Ukraine war ended up being a human rights violation that is whipping his army's ass. And now he has fled, allegedly, to a bunker, is only inviting certain individuals to be in that bunker, and says shamans have given him the go-ahead to use, I think, low-yield nuclear weaponry which there's no such thing nuclear weaponry is dangerous and deadly ask the people of hiroshima and nagasaki if low-range nukes help their cities we have to stop allowing these crazy despots to run rampant over us and how do we stop criminals from getting guns? We can't. I, I'm realistic on the fact that getting guns won't be stopped automatically. But if we make it harder for owning guns in the first place, the luxury of just owning them like they're cars and worse yet, because some of us can't even afford cars. But there are people that have fucking stockpiles of guns because all they have to do is be 18 and legally they can own these things. If we make it less easy for an 18 year old to walk into a gun shop and say hey i got my license i'm 18 years old let me buy it there's no reason why an 18 year old who's not military should be able to just buy an ar-15 you can't convince me that that makes logical sense it should be as hard to get a gun license which we should have been had by now which a lot of countries do have by now than it is yes limit access i think gun ownership is an american right I, I was raised in the house on guns. I was trained as a child by military on how to own a gun and that it's not a toy. But not every American household does that. And things are a lot different now than it was 20, 30 years ago. I am sure that the stuff that my grandparents and parents did in training us wouldn't be allowed nowadays. So I want smarter ownership. I want it to be tougher for just gun anybody to have access to these weapons. I think it is okay to own weaponry if you have a gun safe, if you know that it's not a toy, if you're not posing with them like they're accessories and ornaments. I know that there are smart gun owners, but I also know that there are a lot of doofuses and dipshits with access to weapons. There are also a lot of young hormonal people who are able to legally buy these weapons and cause the damage in Uval, cause the damage in Buffalo. And we have to take this seriously. What happened in Thailand was legal as well. And it got to stop. That man had bought the weapon while he was still a legal officer. Everything he did until that massacre was on the up and up. And this is why we have to attack it where we can. Making those weapons, especially AR-15s, harder to be brought in mass. They need to stop being mass produced. And if you are not 
military, why the fuck do you need to own them? I'm sick and tired of hearing it's for protection. Most of the people that I know currently, and I know a few that own AR-15s, are not in any way, shape, form in danger. They don't have to deal with any kind of real wildlife issues. They're not hunters, because most hunters will tell you, those guns won't do you no good when you're actually hunting for meat that you want to salvage. It's a bullshit weapon that is used to kill quickly. That is all an AR-15 is good for. But if you are an actual hunter, you own a, a, a actual rifle that can get the job done and do a clean kill. Owning a handgun for protection makes more sense. I think that we have to get smarter on this instead of trying to be like all or nothing. I'm a historian. I love history. I learned the damaging effects of trying to willy nilly gut a system with prohibition. We try really hard to go, oh, drinking's bad, temperance, temperance. And you know what? We gave rise to organized crime. We gave rise to speakeasies. We gave rise to a lot more societal issues by trying to blank slate. So I just want a smarter way. We start with the fact that owning an AR-15 shouldn't be that easy. We also add the fact that gun ownership should come with not only licensing, but if you want to own a gun, most gun owners would say, I can pass a test. I can go to a shooting range for an hour and prove that I know how to safely utilize, clean, and, and do my gun. I don't think anything that I would implement would stop a responsible gun owner from owning a gun. I'm not out there to try to take guns from people who just want to have it, who have a legitimate reason. But I do think that we have got to stop giving excuses to those who just want to do the wrong things. It starts with us. It starts with our own attitudes on this too. It's real easy to say we can't, but when we try, I notice that we make pathways. We we talk about other countries, and I don't want to compare us to other countries because other countries don't have the big mix, but they do have successful gun measures. When Christchurch happened in New Zealand, the prime minister didn't play around. She didn't ban all guns, but she banned assault weapons. We've had assault weapons bans twice so far. After Columbine, and I believe the first one was after the 1980 school shooting in California. We have done it, and school shootings went down exponentially. And now we have the added fear of crafted weapons, and we need to get legislation on board that can stop this stuff. We know that the NRA is a big lobbyist for some legislators. We need to get those fuckers out. We need people who see the trouble and can mitigate the people who are fearful that all of a sudden government's going to take from me. All of a sudden I'm not going to be able to protect my family. That is not the goal. The goal is to make it where less of these massacres are able to happen. We're not going to stop everybody. One of the worst massacres happened in, in Las Vegas. People forget because we have so many of them. But one of the worst shootings on American soil happened to concert goers just minding their business. This old boy loaded up suitcases full of fucking weaponry. We should have a system in play. You could put my ass on a literal terrorist watch list for saying BLM. Welcome to the chat, respect, and welcome, Dre Dre. You can put so many Americans on a watch list because they seem problematic. But you're telling me that a person can buy a literal stock ton of weapons and we can't make a list of that? Welcome to the chat, Terry Antico. I just feel like there are measures that have been utilized for most Americans that we can utilize for gun ownership to make it safer, to make it make more sense, and to flag people who could be a potential issue. We have to start doing this smart because if we keep ignoring the issue, we are gonna see more little coffins being buried. And after you've all, I am sick and tired of seeing the sacrificial lambs. I'm sick of pretending like there aren't smart ways to handle this situation. And we can't trust the conservatives right now because as you can see, I have highlighted 
their agenda is fairly clear. I don't have to keep beating the drum of why it's upsetting to look at somebody under the age of 18 in a sexual light as somebody who has survived sexual assault as somebody who was assaulted at the age of 14. It makes me sick thinking about the supposed compliments they give to young women. Oh, your body doesn't look like a child. We don't have to, I'm old school. I did bookkeeping where I hand wrote stuff out. I think the FBI already has plenty of lists that we'll, we will never know about. But to have a national registry on gun ownership is beyond overdue. We need to know who's buying what, how much of what, and when they hit a certain threshold, it needs to set off red flags. I don't think Stephen Paddock would have been able to do what he did if he had been flagged on a registry. But he was armed like a Punisher Warzone character, and nobody was able to stop him because he could legally do it. But I'm telling you, if they have that, okay, this person bought at least 50 guns. He hasn't resold any of those guns. They're not back in the pool. Why does a person need all of this weaponry? They also leave manifestos. I don't understand. Twitter can block my ass for saying the cuss word. Facebook can knock you off for saying something bad about COVID or political stuff. Yet these persons can lay out manifestos where they talk about killing people, where they talk about violence against women, blacks, POC, and nobody sounds the alarm. It has to, we have to stop making excuses because it's out there. My son can't travel in certain neighborhoods in a hoodie without being considered a threat, but these people can literally leave their ideology unpacked when nobody asks them, and then people want to act brand new when they literally get guns and go nuts. And this goes all over the spectrum because supposedly that padded guy was a far leftist. I don't know. He's dead now. We can't ask him. But most of these people are just angry people with no way to channel their rage. Some of them have the small town itis. They grew up in the small town. They were bullied by their peers. And instead of getting out because they feel like there's no way out, they get angry. They get bitter. And they get access to a weapon that allows them to cause the most destruction. Like that idiot that killed all those elders at Tops. And when you combine that in towns where there's small children, like what happened at Aurora, like what happened to Sandy Hook, like what happened at Mayuri Stoneman Douglas, how much more blood tax does our children have to pay? And as we've seen, it's not an epidemic that only happens here, but it happens here so much that we are becoming like used to it. And I need it to stop, you know? Criminals are always getting a hold of guns. We know of supply lines that run from the South all the way back up North from drugs to gun running. But if it's illegal, they can get arrested for it. I'm more worried about the people that do it legally right now because the people that are illegal are always going to try to do illegal things. They get busted. A lot of people are sitting in jail for being busted on I-95 trying to run stuff. I can't stop people who can attempt it because if you can make that money, you're going to try to make that money. But there are the legal precedents that worry me more. The people who are at 18 years old can buy an AR-15 cross state line, murder two people, injure another one, and get away with it. The fact that we, as a society, keep acting like it's not a serious issue when too many lives have been lost, it's got to stop. And I worry that we are going to get to that numb, callous thing of a school shooting happening and it's just another Thursday. It's got to stop. All of them's got to hurt. And what happened in Thailand just reminded me of Yuval so much because those babies were going to school. It was a normal school day. And it was anything but normal. And hearing the stories of that little girl that smeared blood on her and pretended to be hit. 
the fact that they tried to keep a mother out when I can't even imagine because the last time kiddo was in a physical school before I pulled him into virtual school, getting that phone call of don't come up. We are having an active shooter drill because a suspicious person and every single one of us said, "Uh uh-uh, you're not keeping us away from our kids. And just that, 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 the, 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 the fear that you feel and the way the school is trying to handle it. And I understand why they try to handle it that way, but you can't tell a parent who wants to protect their child that you got to stay away from the, your, their child. But that is the reality of school shootings and these stupid ass drills and the courtesy calls to let you know, hey, your child might be in danger, but we can't let you do anything about it. Fuck that. And for my own mental health and for my child's safety, I put him in the Connection Academy in junior high and we haven't looked back. But not every parent has that luxury and I want a world where parents don't have to consider putting their kids in virtual school because they're being bullied for being trans or LGBT, because they're being bullied for being autistic or neurodivergent, because they don't fit in to whatever nonsense mentalities, because schools are structured to separate the wheat from the chaff still instead of fostering a healthy learning environment. We have so much work to do, and it really is on us. And like I said, as I have highlighted here, and I hate having his face up, I have Matt Walsh blocked normally. But thanks to the magic of Twitter, I get to see his odiousness. Somebody I don't follow yet, but I might because he made a good song about taking him out, made me realize that we're not alone. Men are upset with this too. The fact that this man has made a podcast talking about how 16-year-olds are more fertile. They have laid out the agenda between the assholes in Tennessee going after the age of consent, which is already technically 14, which is disgusting as it is, to have somebody say that impregnating a 16-year-old is better because they're fertile. Let's just say you don't understand biology. Just say you don't understand the human body and you're still based in it off of antique medical stuff from years ago before they even knew how women's bodies work before the age of how old humans could get was even really understood women as long as we can produce eggs as long as we do not have our wombs taken out as long as our universe still function can have babies there have been 70 year olds there was a 70 year old women woman in india that was able to give birth Just because men don't biologically understand our bodies doesn't give them the right to say when we're the most fertile. I am 45 years old. I have made the conscious decision not to get a hysterectomy, even though I have fibroids, because I want to still be able to have a baby with my partner if we decide. That was my choice. There are women that choose not to do that. But to say somebody's still fertile or not fertile goes against the understanding of a female body and there are way too many people who don't understand women's rights and women's bodies and they are running for office and they are running shit into the ground and i refuse to let our country become the gilead from handmaiden's tale because people want to turn a blind eye to shit like this There is absolutely, these are the same fuckers who will wear a shirt that says, look at my daughter, I'll put a buckshot in you. They're really territorial about the daughters they have, but they're okay lusting after their friend's 16-year-old. It's all gross anyway. A 16-year-old can't consent, so Matt Walsh is full-on supporting sexual assault. And I am sick and tired of us ignoring the fact that this is what guys like him want. And the only thing I have to say to Matt Walsh is, you already made kids. Pay your child support and stop being so gross, you pedo. I'm just so tired of ignoring the obvious tales of the other side. And what makes it worse is that it's coupled with people going, well, the DNC need a clear message. 
they're not messaging strong enough. I don't feel like the, the stuff I'm doing, which normally is nothing, the people who are text banking and phone banking, they're not on here complaining about the DNC message. They're on there saying, I'm taking a lot of abuse for this party, but it's worth it because we want to save the democracy. But it's always the people, and I can tell when they're not doing anything for politics. They're complaining that there's not enough loud message. We literally have a party that wants to attack your identity if you're LGBT, Muslim, Jewish, non-white, in any way, shape, or form, versus the party that Democrats aren't perfect. They never pitch themselves as a perfect party, but they see our humanity and they want to legislate to make things better for us. I don't know about you, but Dark Brandon has been getting wins in my book from the federal ma marijuana mandate, which coupled with what we're doing here in Michigan means more money, less problems for us because cannabis is going to be where tobacco wishes it was. And then you have the railroad strike being inverted, so many fires being put out by an administration that cares and wants to do the job. So excuse me if I don't need a bigger message than I don't want fuckers like this running stuff. And this idiot used to be in Congress. Could you imagine if men like him were still running their state legislator lusting after a 16 year old it makes the bile in my throat right now y'all it makes me sick to think about but there are plenty of assholes like matt walsh walking our halls of congress and i don't want this anymore they're the same ones that say things like a pregnancy can't happen from forcible rape D did you sleep during biology do you not understand how basic sex works most of them don't understand periods. They think, ew, I'm not supposed to notice. I don't have those parts. But learning about it, they're the same ones that even when they're female, feed into that toxic patriarchy. I saw that video earlier, that young lady who was pushed by a nurse who was upset because she as a black woman wanted to take time off. She's seven months pregnant. The pregnancy pains were too much. With kiddo, even though I was not sure I was pregnant until 38 weeks in, I got bed rest for the, the last few weeks having him because it was a lot of pressure on my back, on my spine. I thought it was cancer because uh, I didn't know. And the pain was a lot. So for people who try to act like pregnancy is a walk in the park and you worked up to your last day, Miss Nurse Karen, Black maternal mortality is way too great for you to push what worked for you onto a woman who knows her body. Now that's the problem with our country. There are way too many people who push what works for me, will work for thee, and we have to stop allowing that attitude. It is not a one size fit all situation. Not everybody's body, blood type, and everything else is the same. They just learned that there is an even new blood type out there, some ER factor that also works against different antibodies. One of the things I had to deal with with kiddo was getting a shot because I found out that the first pregnancy that I ever had probably was lost because my former partner had a positive blood type and I had a negative blood type. And your body will attack a child made from that kind of combination. But I bet most people don't even realize that because most people don't bother to learn basic biology. So they say shit like, oh, 16 year olds at their most fertile. Maybe if it was the 1500s and the life expectancy for most humans weren't until the 30s. But the human body is a miraculous thing and we are still learning about it. And some people don't even want to learn the basic functions of biology. And we have got to stop letting them control the narrative. Matt Walsh is disgusting. That nurse who tried to force that lady into working to her freaking last due date is disgusting. And we have got to stop letting these cats control the narrative. And they do. And they don't freaking understand the Bible at all. One of the things that I'm going to show y'all 
Besides the dark random thing that I just thought was cute. Was something disturbing. But it doesn't surprise me because Bible thumpers are just that. They thump the Bible. They don't care to read or or actually care about the Bible. You might have to go under uh, tweets and respond. Because they're showing all my stuffler stuff. And it's just, it's infuriating to me when you see stuff like this, because they seriously think that saying things like this is, is normal. Let me find my friend Portia, because she was the one that highlighted the tweet. Oh, that was that lady that told my friend that she had slave mentality, and it was like, you know what? I'm not arguing with randos on Twitter no more. I told y'all before, and I mean it. If you waste your interaction with me, I will get rid of you. If I know that you're the kind that will keep tweeting at me, you will be put in the mute pile because it's funny, and I know who you are. I won't see what you have to say anyway, and then you get to see what I get to say that pisses you off. If you're really a waste of my time, I'm just going to put you in a block bin. You can tout like a pigeon with shit on its back that you won, get in the lib riled up whatever take your victory shitty trophy i am not gonna waste my mental health arguing with people on twitter there's so many great people i interact with that's what social media is supposed to be about i'm not here to fight with everybody but you got this guy who claims to be a pastor who says if god tells you to commit murder you should do it and this is where they're trying to go this is where it all leads, that ultimate control power trip for them. They don't even care that their own good book says thou shalt not kill. It's one of the first freaking commandments. They don't care. They cherry pick it. And the dangers of letting this stuff go unchecked, especially if you consider yourself a Christian, especially if you consider yourself a good Christian in this point, these people are speaking for your faith. I don't know any deity that's telling a mortal person to go about and kill people, but this is what they're teaching people, along with those questionable youth pastors lusting after young girls, giving them stickers like, I heart sexy look youth pastors, and this shit is normalized too much. The whole, we're not going to talk about that, that's just how it is. My youth pastor was the same way. Stop normalizing the creepiness, stop normalizing shit like this. It's not normal for somebody who's supposed to be giving you spiritual guidance to tell you that it is okay to use God to kill somebody. I don't even understand why my crazy ass has to be the one to say this. But they are normalizing this because they've been pushing for Armageddon for so long. It's not even funny. Pushing for some rapture because they think that they're going to get in some paradise. And I've said it before, and I will say it again to my last breath. I have spent enough mortal time with y'all. If you're trying to sell me on an afterlife with these same ass bigots, these same gun runners, these same people who want the illusion of power here, whether it's wealth, whether it's greed, whether it's gun ownership, you're telling me that I've got to be a good person to get into paradise with those fuckers. No, thank you. I'm good. Pass. Hard pass, bro. I am done playing games with people about this. I am a very spiritual person. I was raised in the church. I walked away at 18 because I felt like while I enjoyed the stories, it didn't speak to me. When I started learning Pan-African shamanism, when I started getting in touch with my culture and my roots, when I started learning things about true voodoo, not that shit that Hollywood things about zombies and shit, but the actual spiritual practices, it opened up my world and I finally felt spiritually connected to something. And it is not the ding black Christians because for real, it was all we had going for our, our ancestors. I understood why spiritual hymns, why going to church, why homecomings instead of funerals mean so much to us. So I can still have those spiritual connections to certain church things without having to believe fully in that indoctrination. It's just not for me. My partner fully believes in it. It works for him. I think spirituality has to be a personal 
path. And I think there are far too many people that, do, well, I think this way. The people around me think this way. So why can't we force it on you? We're all trying for paradise. Paradise is supposed to be here. We're supposed to be making this life good. You're all worried about some afterlife, but if you're making this life shitty for people, how the heck do you expect to get into some sort of heaven? Why would a deity want somebody like you with them when all you've done is be a judgmental bigot, a hateful, harmful person who just murders people because that's the only power and control you think you have? I am not the best person in the world. I don't try to put myself out there. I am a constant work in progress. And even I see that there is no such thing as true power. There's that illusion of having things, but life is just what you make of it. And I decided long ago to stop living my life for others and just do the things that made me happy. And it was freeing. And I know that doing it isn't freaking easy, but it really is rewarding and exactly terry and it's funny because somebody literally accused me of being a cult leader and i wish sometimes i think about getting a plot of land inviting a bunch of people on it and just living our best lives because if that's what a cult is i'll sign you all up purple robes and baked goods but in all seriousness i don't hate religion I just hate the people that twist religion into little private cliques and clubs that want to leave people out, that want to say, oh, we're doing this for paradise, but you have made life miserable. So what kind of paradise would it be trapped in that eternal afterlife with you? No, thank you. I don't need it. And the place you swear that people like me and people like the LGBT going sounds lit. I would rather go there. Thank you. I'm just like, you know, you're not selling your faith at all with the way you act judgmental. You're not selling your faith when you turn a blind eye to the predators. You're not selling your faith when you turn a blind eye to the violence. And when you have somebody who claims to be about God saying things like, if God tells you to kill somebody, you should do it. So I have schizophrenia. There are a lot of voices going on in my head. I'm 100% honest about that. Any given day, I'm having conversations with myself. Not one time did I think any of those voices was God. I've been lucky. I don't know in my really non-lucid days what I said. Y'all have to ask former doctors about that. You really can't because of HIPAA. But I do know that the whole idea of talking to deities, it doesn't seem off to me. But it doesn't seem like an all-powerful being that could do the job himself is going to tell a random mortal to do that. It feels like it's an excuse for somebody who just wants to kill people. And I am getting really sick and tired of average human beings who aren't ballsy enough to ownership their own dark thoughts, blaming God for it. Y'all Y'all ain't slick anymore. It's really tiring with somebody who suffers from mental health issues, somebody who's had it for a very long time now, having to deal with people who lie and say that it's God telling them to do stuff. No, it's your own dark thoughts. And you need to own up to them and get some help. And stop blaming religion for your own shortcomings because that's all that is at this point. And it's really exhausting to me because just surviving whether you have mental health issues, whether you have any problems at all can be tough. And I don't say this to give a pass to people. I know I ding certain demographics for having the easy button mode, but their lives aren't that easy either. That's why they're so angry. That's why they age like spoiled milk for some of them. Because of societal pressures to be successful when all you want to do is live your life the way you want to. But you can't because, morally speaking, you've got to look a certain way and have a certain thing and do this and do that. And if we humans could just get away from trying to force people into those weird societal modes and just let people be, make it where learning is open and expressive and never-ending. Put in that arbitrary, oh, we've got to get kids in young and start them early and test them to all high heaven. Most kids can't stand school because of that. Nobody wants to sit in a tight-ass classroom with a teacher that really doesn't want to be there, yapping about shit they don't care about, and then be tested on it only to fail said test constantly. That is not learning. 
Learning is finding what the kid is interested in and harboring that love and building from there. One of the things that opened Kiddo up from being non-verbal with his autism was they figured out he likes ocean stuff. And one of his first clear sentences was, I want to be a marine biologist. And even from elementary school, they started catering lessons around ocean stuff. They started giving him awards like zoo books and stuff. So I know it's possible, but too many schools don't have the funding. Too many Republicans want to ding them and make it worse. And it's ridiculous. And then you want to have these idiots build religious schools. And thank you for bringing that up, Respect, because religious really has covered up heinous acts. And now we've got so-called pseudo-Christians like Kanye West and other fuckers create in their religious schools, which is only going to make a crop of more damaged American kids. And we have to stop this. I really feel like I love our country's supposed freedoms, but the freedom to be dumb has gone way too long. The freedom of supposed choice in religion when it's just a way for Christians to say, this is really our country and we're just letting the rest of you live here, has got to stop. America has no national religion. We don't need one. We are a melting pot. Some of us don't even identify as having any faith at all. I think the time has come beyond time to start respecting the differences that we have in this country and to stop letting the theocrats try to dictate things. They've already been able to ban books, everything from Mouse to I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings, which has absolutely nothing to do with anything but showing the dark sides of our human history to teach our kids that this shit's not right. But oh no, we can't do that. And then this week, people talking about, well, I was on, oh, today I found out via Jeopardy that there was a green book. I know that some people can legitimately be willfully ignorant. It's just a fact of life. You can ignore that uncle or grandpa of yours that says openly racist things. You can ignore the fact that your neighbors have certain looks about them and that if somebody that doesn't look like you moves in, you hyper-focus on them. You can act like we don't know that there's a certain hierarchy and pecking order amongst your demographic, but you can't hide the fact that some of you act willingly ignorant to the harm and violence, to the literal sun downtown, the reason the Green Book even had to fucking be made. And no, it wasn't like that movie, that weird white savior narrative movie tried to portray it. It was literally black and our allies trying to figure out how to navigate our own fucking country without getting lynched, what towns to avoid, what diners not to go into, what hotels will treat our money like it's worth having. That's a reality. And we were far from the only group. My friend Case let me know that LGBTQ have their own version because to safely travel in your own country as LGBTQ, is still dangerous in America. And that is the reality for us, and it has to stop. We keep making excuses, yet we ignore that even here in Michigan, there are sundown towns still. A young man, not even four months ago, got beat trying to do a DoorDash pickup. They literally tried to kill him for being black in the wrong side of town, and it has to stop. And we keep trying to ignore the issue. Maybe it'll go away. Maybe a generation. We literally seen generational hate continue on. That's why these 18-year-olds will go to places like Tops looking for an all-black grocery store to shoot up. It's why they targeted schools like Yuval. The rise in racial crimes are going to keep happening because in a lot of these small towns, all they're given is a full-on ingestion of Fox News who gets off on stoking the fears. Fears of black people, fears of the queers, fears of anybody different. 
and they get nothing but constant amplification by their church to, oh, anybody that's not like you is a sinner, therefore you should pray for them, but you can also rebuke them. And they get this constant toxic cocktail of what it means to be men, what it means to be women, processing that with hormones, and you've got a volatile cocktail. And then you add the ease of access to assault rifles. And it is just a perfect combination for destruction that we have got to pinpoint a start. And it starts with us. Next month, we have the ability to change so many state legislations. So many states could go from being in the hands of literal despots who do million dollar migrant stunts while their states need federal aid now for hurricanes. We could do so much on a local level with our legislators to help our judiciary system clean out the rot, to help our DAs target people who try to plot to kidnap our governor even. We have the ability to put justices on the bench that don't see our kids as threats but do see the threats of people who buy too many AR-15s. We have the ability, and we have to start exercising that ability by using our voice to vote. There are far too many people that constantly make excuses against doing the right thing. And I get it. Doing the right thing ain't easy. But they have made it so much easier. I filled out an absentee ballot. Back in the day, you literally had to go in. And most of the time, it was a loud and noisy school in New York. And in Florida, I think we had a library. And in South Florida, I believe it was like this little, I don't even want to call it a mall. It was like a strip mall that set up a voting office. I voted where I could. But I was making sure, because my grandmother's voice was always in my head, vote because they don't want you to. Now, I get to vote from the comfort of my home. I get to look up stuff on Ballotpedia. I get to fill out the ballot at my leisure and get it right down to my office, which is only about a five-minute drive away. I don't put it in anybody else's hands. I put it right in the Dropbox, and then I can go online within a week and check to make sure that it's registered. And then check on November 8th to make sure it's touted. That is how it should be for every American so that there is no excuse. But not every state currently has absentee ballots still. And that is on purpose. They don't want us to have ease of access. And if you're a disabled American right now, you should have ease of access voting. But if you're any American right now, you should be able to have your voice count. And I don't want to hear the fears and what ifs because there are always going to be those contrarians that don't vote no matter how easy it is for them. I'm not here to be the Pied Piper for dum-dums. I'm here to talk to people who do vote, whether you use the some-timers or all the timers. You should want ease of access voting because it is the right thing to do. And you should be teaching your young the importance of voting. Kiddo's ready. He is going to be registered next year on his 18th birthday it was all set up he's been going with me since he was in a freaking child uh safety seat carrier he has gotten his little i junior voted stickers when we were in nc especially he would walk right with me to the firehouse because that's where we would vote i wanted him to have the same thing instilled in him that was instilled in me because it's important our people were hung from trees for the right to vote. For women, we were literally attacked for daring to want the right to be viewed as equal citizens. So I will be damned if I let my apathy erode my right. I think it's important to voice concern. I don't act like our party is 100% perfect. We have issues, far left issues especially. But I can complain and do nothing and then get worse. Or I can do something and have valid, fact-driven complaints. And too many people don't want that. They go by their feelings. Well, I just feel like we should have this. New Green Deal sounds good to me. New Green Deal is just a bunch of AOC's thoughts on the paper. It's not a le legitimate legislation. You want legitimate legislation? Look no further than homegirl. Why am I blanking at her name? I'm seeing her face. 
I can see your glasses and everything else. She is a true legislator. She has passed so many bills, including things for our vets. Between her and Chantel Brown, we have seen what junior legislators can do. And yes, thank you, Terry. Lauren Underwood. And it just boggles my mind how people want to push for people that just want to yell controversial shit, but don't do the job that they were elected to do. They want to get GQ covers and go to expensive galas, but they don't want to legislate and take care of this communities. And I am sick of it. So yes, while I always try to be pro-Democrat, I'm realistic that I don't back every Dem. I'm realistic that I will put a Dem under a microscope to see what is a problem with them. And not every problem that some people have with a Democrat, I will have with them. Did I like Anthony Weiner? No, I thought he was a gross fucking pervert. But if his wife was willing to give him a chance, I was going to ignore the fucking infidelity issue because he's far from the only man doing that nasty shit. It only becomes a problem when it affects their legislation stuff for me. Because I grew up with Bill Clinton. I remember how ridiculous those stupid impeachment trials. Kent Starr, Newt Gingrich, they all just thought they had his balls by the fire. And while, yes, Bill was dumb for lying about the obvious sexual relationship he was having, it wasn't enough to tank his presidency. Most people who aren't directly involved shouldn't care about a politician's infidelity shouldn't be in other people's business i am more worried about electing politicians that waste the space electing politicians that get in the way of legislation that can help us on the national level and we have the opportunity by vetting by helping them win primaries and by electing them to get people in that not only will help pass better bills for your state and beyond, but work with this current administration who has been moving fucking mountains with complete opposition. You have over 50 senators who don't want to do their jobs, who think they're safe and untouchable. You have a lot of district reps that think that. And it is our job next month to see that they don't feel comfortable anymore, to show them that blue wave instead of it just being a Twitter slogan. Because women, I need to remind you, our rights are on the line. Our rights to medication, our rights to safe procedures, our rights to make a medical choice that is our right to choose. And if you're a non-straight Christian white male, I hate to break it to you, but they're after your rights too. Whether you think you're adjacent enough, whether you think you hide in the closet deep enough, whether you think they're affable enough to you because they haven't called you to slur to your face. We have to stop playing these games because they will run us into the ground. We have seen what they have justified with their biblical liens before. Historically speaking, it hasn't worked well for my people. They put us in chains. They will justify interring you in camps. Asian Americans have those stories. They will put out whole ass laws, full ass banning something, only giving rise to illegal measures. That is why I want smart legislators. Legislators that can put in laws that not only make sense, but make it harder for certain people to thrive. And then we start working on building our society. Because that's what we humans are supposed to be doing. I don't want a better society just in my stories. It shouldn't take a whole ass Armageddon-like apocalypse for us humans to get it together. We have this life now. And you should be constantly building yourself up. Constantly working on learning and educating and learning beyond yourself. I know that it's not easy in America. Some people are scary. I, for real, have lived my last two years as an almost complete shut-in. I go out when I have to, and it gives me high anxiety because of COVID. And even before that, being around certain groups of people now, I am always anxious that I'm going to be put in a situation where I am not going to keep calm. 
where somebody from a certain demographic says or does something that pushes me over the edge. It happened in NC. I chased down an old man that called my then seven-year-old the N-word. I was going to bust his head to the freaking me. I didn't care. I had never seen red before in my life so hard. I remember my first time being called that word. I was at least a fucking teenager. It still happened in NYC of all places. The so-called liberal bastion that they keep trying to turn it into. Anybody from NYC can tell you it's a fucking concrete jungle for the reason. It's not absolved. There are haters there too. And there are plenty of bigots crammed in with the rest of us. And upstate New York is full of them as well. But to act like there isn't an issue has got to stop. And to act like we can't grow has got to stop. Because the only way we are going to change things is through ourselves. We are in a digital age. And while, yes, it's fun to use the internet to interact with each other and watch your favorite shows and commiserate, we can also be learning. We should always be learning. There are so many amazingly free apps out there to learn languages, to learn math, to learn all the skills that we might not have paid attention to in school because school wasn't always fun. It was fun for me, but I was a nerd. The whole reason why school was fun for me was I was escaping my house. I hated being at home. So school was my escape for a few hours. Not everybody had that. But for those that were in the bookworm, I feel your pain. Having teachers that didn't always feel like they cared about what they were talking about. Having subjects that you didn't always understand. The fear of having to test and write out reports that you really didn't understand. When we literally have interactive learning now, when we have things on YouTube that are way more fun and engagement, historical stuff from people with animation, even Hank Green's series has helped Kiddo with some of his science stuff. So I really feel like we will see an age of enlightenment. We just have to go through a bit of a dark age. And it's annoying. And I see the morality lowering. I see the people fighting back and forth. And I, I really wish I could stop people from constantly arguing. But I know that it's not my place. All I can do is hope that people get it together. And welcome back, Chip. It's been long, long time no see. And it's a bonnet. You've been here before. I I remember you from a few months ago. Anyhow. I just think that we can get better. I know that it's fine, Chip. I know that it seems like arguing and snapping at each other a month before the midterms is, is, is stress relief. And I know that everybody wants to share their opinion on Twitter especially and go back and forth. <laughs> Calm down. Keep your focus. Fill out your ballots or have your game plan if you have to go in person because it really is all hands on deck i'm tired of worrying but i can't stop worrying between what's going on here what's going on abroad the fact that our news is not really highlighting on the things that are important the fact that that man baby is running around with documents still giving these weird ass rallies and all people want to talk about is, oh, Kanye West wore a white life matter shirt. Nobody cares about Kanye West right now. The only person that should worry about Kanye West is his ex because I fear for her safety. But honestly speaking, I don't think about Kanye West. I don't care about Kanye West. I don't listen to his music no more. I, I don't deal with, he said he don't like reading. So for me as an author, I legitimately just don't care. I pay him the dust he deserves. I'm just so sick and tired. And it's true respect. That not only the freaking tabloids, but what's worse is how many journalists are holding information to sell books. This is why I don't fuck with our media anymore. Maggie Haberman doing freaking interviews where she literally knew Trump was holding these things. You can believe that all you want. You're on your own with that. Kanye West, persona non grata to me. Because I don't like people that don't read. Sorry, just not my type. Plenty of better rappers out there, as far as I'm concerned, that don't sell weird-ass ashtray-looking shoes for $700. My thing is, 
I feel like he's doing this because he's sputtering out. And if you want to give him that attention, fine. I honestly pay him dust. Maggie Haberman. Bob Woodward is the only one I've come for very vehemently because he literally sat on information to sell a book that he knew the man was keeping COVID downplayed. And I will never forgive that man for that because I lost relatives and friends to that shit because he wanted to sell a book. This is why I said the fourth estate's broken. I don't know if it'll be repaired and I'm not. it's not my job to repair it. The fact is, I'm sick of journalists making money off of stuff like this. I'm sick of them having the kind of platform where they feel safe doing that. I know journalists being in the history was never a perfect thing. These, her newspaper literally gave puff pieces to both Stalin and Hitler. The New York Times has always been a piece of shit paper. I say that as a New Yorker. But what bothers me is how much power and sway they have over certain narratives. Everything from opinion pieces to the fact that they're journalists can sit on information like that and then sell books. And then they put them on their bestseller list, influencing people into believing that they need to buy it. But we know that Haberman shit is going to be like Jared's shitty book and all the rest of them MAGA shitty books sitting in the Dollar Tree at discount because they can't even sell it for a dollar. That's the reality of Maggie Haberman's situation. No matter how many people are allowing her to go on their stuff looking at you, The View, this is why I don't watch that show. But I've seen enough people complaining about it. It's like, you know how they stop booking people you don't like on the show? You stop giving them ratings. I mean, that's how I handle things. The bonnet keeps my hair nice. And when I first started, I started doing shorts when I was upset. And there was a lot of time in the morning before I did my hair. And I liked it. So I just wear my bonnet. It really is that simple. I normally keep my hair in either braids or curls. It's a natural look. So I wear my bonnet and it makes me feel better. But we are going to get ready to wrap this up, y'all. I want to thank you all for sitting in. Thank you to the new people that have come in. It's really nice. I have several colors. My friend Angela uh, helped me out by donating a bunch of them. And they're very pretty. I am loving my purple one right now. But we are going to get ready to wrap this up. I will be back on Tuesday for another Bonnet Chronicles. Once again, I want to thank everybody who has been supporting the book. We have signed. We will be mailing a bunch of these out. Those of you who got yours already, thank you for the pictures. I have loved them. Roger's new artwork is so awesome. I love this. It is a full sci-fi novel and i really truly appreciate it ray barrett i'm gonna let y'all in on something i've been on twitch for almost four years now and every time i have tried to use the twitch controls from my stream labs it does not work right so while i know you want me to send my chat into somebody unknown I do not do those kind of raids on Bonnet Chronicle Nights. If this was a Sunday gaming session, which I will be back on Sunday with D&D, I would do that. But for Bonnet Chronicles, all my people are in here just to hear political commentary. I don't know this person well enough, so I thank you for the suggestion. But I suggest y'all go on. I'm going to wrap this up. I will see you ladies and gentlemen next week if you're in for the next Bonnet Chronicles. Thank you all for tuning in, but I'm going to go make dinner for Axiom and I now. See you and love y'all.